All right, what's up everybody? Meeting up with a buddy to uh, go check out Cars and Coffee today and I thought I'd bring you guys along and uh, make a video with this old girl for once. First things first, we got to unplug the tender off of this thing. Otherwise, as much as this thing sits, it would be dead as a doornail in a couple of days. Today I'm gonna head over to my buddy Mr. Boosted Salika's house and we're gonna check out some of his Toyotas and stuff first before we go. Um, he just picked up a brand new GR Corolla, so we're gonna check that thing out and I think he's taking that to Cars and Coffee today. He's got a couple other cool Toyotas there as well and then uh, we'll go check out the event and see what kind of cars are there. We made it here guys. I'm uh, switching over to the phone because I don't feel like being a goof with the big camera out in public, but uh, I'm a little bit like self-conscious about this car, especially as a detailer. We got like so many swirl marks and stuff. I really let this car go, but uh, you know how it is, man. Like life gets in the way. We'll get it back. I'm going to do a big detail video on it at some point. Anyways, this is uh, my buddy Tyler's place. This is his new purchase right here. This is the new GR Corolla. He's got one of very few here in Ontario. Man, this thing is sick, man. He was just telling me some of his plans for it. I'll get him to explain some of it to you later on. You just hit, what, 1,000 kilometers on it? So it's officially broken in, ready for hood rat activities. Yeah, we'll get into that a little bit more. I think most of you guys are probably going to be more interested in this big old green heifer back here. <laughs> I think, what do you think? Should we do like a like a feature video or something on this? Yeah. On the channel? Yeah, that's, it needs to get cleaned up and... Oh Some yeah, taken care of. you've been a naughty boy. This thing is dirty looking. What's going yeah, on? It's, it's seen some abuse this summer. <laughs> this is what, a 20, 2020? 2020. TRD Pro? Yep. And obviously not stock. It's got some, some goodies done to it. It's uh, on the Westcott West lift kit. Um, so it's what, an inch higher than a regular an inch Pro? inch and a half higher than a regular Pro. Yeah. Army green, so probably what, arguably the most rarest TRD Pro color on these trucks? Because yeah. of the, like the supply chain issues with COVID and all yeah, that stuff? Yeah, so when, when, the, when they did the special colors in 2020, they shut down some of the plants. So this is probably the most rare TRD Pro color you can get on the Tundra. Like production number wise. Because yeah. they, like they weren't able to build as many as they intended to build, I guess, right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so this thing is pretty cool. I think we're gonna be seeing this thing on, on the channel a little bit more often. We gotta, most of these guys are all Toyota truck guys, right? So it's like, there you go. Nobody cares about the MR2 out there. I can tell you one thing for sure, nobody cares about the Harley. There's no question about that. But uh, and this is the... the truck people are my people. Yeah. This is the uh, the house that he drags behind it to the racetracks and stuff. Which is pretty cool too. Which we just redid Which... the whole interior on this. Oh, you want to... Yeah, is it locked? It. Nope. We should do a, a, a trivia for people. If they can guess which tracks each of these are. If you guess correctly in the comments, I don't care. Get yourself a cookie. <laughs> I'll pay for shipping for a Canadian Grand sticker. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that one looks familiar. Yeah, that one's familiar. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The other one's not so much. Not so much. Well, I'd say that one is pretty familiar <laughs> yeah, yeah, too. Yeah. They're about to find and out. If was all completely redone on the inside now. You had like water damage or something you said? Yeah, that, so we had to replace the whole front wall of it. How did that ha This is a new trailer. How did that happen? It leaked down from the roof, we think. Mm -hmm. And it destroyed that whole front wall. So we had to pull it apart. Uh, put all the new insulation in it, redid it. So now it's all wood. And then we changed the sink to this looks a awesome. black sink. Did a live edge piece of wood here. And the piece of wood was so long that when we cut it, we also did a table. Oh, nice. So all matchy matchy. So that's nice. Real nice. Big upgrade. But what do you think? Should we, uh, should we take them in the garage and show them the actual boosted Celica? So this thing is, uh, 
what would you say, one of a kind to say the least? This is, yeah. If you can see underneath the, like behind all the stuff, this is a 7th gen Toyota Celica. So, okay, how would we describe this thing? I got like a crappy camera angle here, but um, this is like if Toyota was to build a GT3 RS version of their Celica. Yeah. Right? That's exactly kind of what I was going for. Yeah. So this is what, it's a, a built 2ZZ crate motor. So this was originally a GT, originally which would have had a 1ZZ engine. Yeah. Yeah, with the, and then now it's a built uh, 2ZZ from Monkey Wrench Racing. And still 1.8 liter, right? S still a 1.8. But now it's obviously boosted. It's, there, there you go, boosted Celica, folks. Exactly. Did I really have to tie that together for you guys? Yeah, we got TRD big brakes up front here. Tire decals, so that's like at least 15 horsepower probably. Yeah. Custom painted from, okay, so there's like, there's a long story behind it. We'd have to do like a, <laughs> a very like specific video about this car to share the whole story. But this is originally a show car that was like all show, no go. Yep. So this is custom paint. This isn't vinyl on the roof or anything. This is legit, a, an actual paint job. Yeah, this, uh, this car was on air ride with... <laughs> Big 18 inch white wheels and... I should, you know what, you should send me some of those pictures and I'll put them on the screen so they can see like the former life of this car. Yeah. But, uh, so it's definitely gone like full circle and now it's like mostly go and a little bit of show. He just recently, I don't know, it's probably too dark to see, but he just recently redid the entire interior in this thing. Like the seats are covered, he's got carbon fiber on everything. This is my old Nardi, this is my Nardi wheel, right? Yeah. My old steering wheel. Uh, he's got like the glitter headliner in it in case you want to impress a girl. Yeah, you gotta have that Rolls-Royce headliner. <laughs> you gotta have it. It's got a color match roll cage and everything in the back. So like this thing, it's pretty, but it means business. And it also has a blown freaking turbo right now. So that's why he's not really driving it. But that eventually is gonna be on the agenda. But the problem is, homeboy decided to get himself a brand new GR Corolla. And he's like, what Celica? What Celica? <laughs> Someday it's gonna be back on the streets again. It needs to go to another shop here in town to get the fenders pulled on it. Oh yeah? Because... Are they rubbing? Uh, or for the new wheels. New wheels on it. Yeah. I went. Are those here? Yeah, I went bigger on the tires. So these are legit TRD. What was the model? TRD T3. T3s, yeah. So he had these repowder coated, and this is the original white color that they came yep. in, right? They're yep. just. So we had them refreshed. Got the center caps on. So these are raised wheels that were made for TRD back in the day, and. These are the actual Celica spec ones. Yeah, so they fit perfectly. These are intended to be on that car and everything. Uh, enjoy them while they're white now because as soon as they touch the car, they'll probably turn black. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Got a random T37 chilling over here too. It's got, man, up. we could dig up some Easter eggs in this place, man. He's got all, all kinds of cool memorabilia and stuff. Yeah. yeah, what do you got? Yeah, it'll tow your boat. Oh, that's a, the original advertisement. <laughs> yeah. So he's a parts guy at the local Toyota dealer. So that explains why he has access to some pretty cool stuff that he gets his hands on. That Man, I forgot about the Sequoia. That was his I OG truck. truck. I miss that thing. And believe it or not, that's the same set of method wheels that he had on that truck that are on the TRD Pro Tundra. He just, <laughs> it's been through what, three, that set's been through three different trucks now? Yeah, yeah. It was on the so Sequoia, he, on my orange Tundra, and now on this one. Yeah, so before this Tundra, he had a, a TRD Foe. It's an <laughs> Inferno Orange semi double cab, semi-pro. Yeah, he converted into a pro, and now he has a real pro. But Cars and coffee? Cars and coffee. Let's do it. Oh, one other thing. So... <laughs> I still have like over a quarter tank of year and a half old gas and I really want to party. <laughs> so I'm kind of thinking about just like YOLOing it and filling it up. Like where do you get 94 octane around here? Is there a spot nearby or am I out of luck for now? For 94? Yeah. You're out of luck on 94. I can get you 93 nearby, but 94 I can't. Mm, the car will crap its pants on 93 probably. I don't know. Check out that FJ. We're on our way to Cars and Coffee now, and I think this is the last one of the season, which sucks because this is my first one of the season. <laughs> what can you do? Um, it's supposed to be a pretty good turnout, I think. My buddy with the NSX was, I thought he would go to something like this because he's always down for all the events, but uh, he gave up on this one because he went once last year and somebody scratched his car. So uh, I guess we gotta be a little bit careful of where we park today. That Corolla looks aggressive from behind, though, man. As you heard, I guess uh, it's no good news about getting some fresh gas for this thing out here in Cambridge, but uh, I'll try to find some on the way home, at least. 
I should probably do some kind of like a walk around tour of this car again. I did it like when I first started this channel. What was it like five plus years ago? Um, I should probably do a new one though. If, if you don't want to wait, you can dig way back in the channel history, but uh, yeah, I'll do a fresh one, I think. place to park here. There's not many people here at all, surprisingly. All right, we made it. We got some pretty cool cars here right off the bat. Any event that starts off with a Mark IV Supra, that's my kind of event, that's for sure. This thing is making some jam too. He says, he just told me it's making 760 to the wheels on pump gas. So you put some uh, race gas or E85 in this thing and it's really gonna get down. But check this out, he's got one-off wheels that were custom made with his signature in the spoke. So these were built like for his his specs, like his fitment. And on top of that had his, his uh, signature put in them, which is really cool. This is a clean car, man. It's right-hand drive, but we won't hold it against him. Very clean setup. He's got a couple like yellow accents here and there. Here's his Instagram handle if you want to check him out. I'm pretty sure he has some other really cool cars too, so you might want to take a look. Got the Recaros in here, the yellow seat belts. It's one of the 325s on the back. Obviously, you gotta have some pretty decent rubber to put that power down. <laughs> OMG Becky with a Titan plate. That's good stuff. Very clean. Apparently, this thing is making some some serious jam too. Somebody says like 600 or something, Turbo K series. Really nice wheel setup on it for sure. Type R Recaros. Nice clean interior. Wide body up front, very cool. Yeah, I like it. I mean, this is reminding me I need to like step my game up here. I'm letting this thing go. I think I washed it once so far and that's it. Yeah. But I did the most important thing. I branded it finally. Put the deco on the <laughs> windshield. You're um, talking about you're trying to figure out the intake, what you want to go with? Yeah, we gotta try to figure out which intake I want to go with. Uh, originally I was gonna do the Forge Motorsport one. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot better options I think that are kind of slowly coming into the market now. Yeah. Um, I think it's even Tari. Uh, they're a big BMW kind of thing and it does a it does a really cool like RAM air thing here. Oh yeah. Um, and then Versus Engineering makes a diffuser and uh, front cooling for the front brakes. And oh right, you said there's a vent that comes in. Vents that come in, they, it builds in from down here. Yeah. And it actually has uh, actually machine parts that go up like backing plates for the front brakes. Sweet. Um, and then once I get back from uh, my trip to Vegas, uh, I'm going to be able to look at a bunch of coilovers that are on cars while I'm there. Yeah. So I'll be able to make an uh, educated guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is still stock height, so it's a little bit 4x4 mode right now. But if any car can get away with 4x4 mode, it's like the rally-inspired car, at least. So you don't have to feel too bad about that. The thing is put the spacers on it to space the front wheel. Oh, that's right. You got wheel spacers on here, right? Yeah. yeah. So they're sitting more flush in the fenders, which is a nice little uh, kind of a hold you over until you get your wheels for it. Yeah. Like, yeah. the end goal with this car is about 400, 400 horsepower, 400, 450. Yeah. And actually take it to the track and use it the way it's intended. Yeah, yeah. What do they make stock? 320 or something? Uh, I think it's like 305. 305? Because it's about 100 horsepower per cylinder. Oh, okay. I'm willing to bet even just with a quick little twist of a boost controller you can get quite a bit more out of these, eh? Check it out though, it's got the dry carbon roof on it from the factory. How wild is that? On a Toyota Corolla. What a world we're living in, eh? Very cool car. Check this thing out. Oh, okay, so that is definitely not a, what is it, a VG or whatever these things came with? A VQ? Yeah. LS swap and a 300ZX. This thing is nice, man. I've always loved these cars. Believe it or not, a 300ZX, that was like the first car when I was a teenager that got me into import cars. I remember I was riding my BMX bike and I saw a dark green one with a Gretty exhaust, like the Gretty dual exhaust on the back with the big huge mufflers. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. I wonder what this thing sounds like with an LS in it. This is like a kind of a smaller turnout, but some pretty high quality cars, which is my style. Some new Supras. Get the shadow on the shot, eh? What an idiot. I don't know what I'm doing here, guys. Oh, 
Looks like a fun car for sure. The Beamer Boys back here. This thing is cool, man. This is a supercharged E46, I believe. I don't know what kind of power it's making, but it's super clean. Laguna Seca Blue, nice and low. Paint looks good on it, look at this. Well, paint looks decent on it. Nice looking car, man. These things have really gone up in value. You used to be able to get them for a pretty good bargain a few years ago, but now they've gotten popular, so. And look at the brakes on this thing. What are those? Those are huge. This thing has a pretty beefy setup on it. This is a newer Type R. You said that he had to do a bunch of work to fit these tires on this yeah, thing? You were talking to him? Yeah, it looks like it. Very cool. I like the uh, the red on red seats. I don't know if I have the guts to do it on my car or not, but I I do like it. I always thought it'd be too much red, but you know, I I can see it. I think it's this car can pull it off. Not for everyone. I don't know, man. I think it's for me. This thing looks pretty aggressive. This would be a lot of fun to drive. Check it out. It looks like since he's upgraded his steering wheel, he's put his steering wheel controls on like a separate mount underneath, which I guess makes sense on a modern car like this. It's like Mugen side mirrors and everything. This car's got some crazy stuff on it, man. Some Scooby Doo action. SSRs and Brembos. Looks good. Somebody lost their coffee. Oh, crap. I like these, man. I think these are underrated. I think these are a really fun car. I don't know what they go for these days if you got to pay a lot to get them, but yeah. Some nice ad vans on this one. I like it. I'm happy to see a lot of these cars are dusty like mine. They're all being driven, which is cool. It seems like it's kind of like the, uh, the vibe of an event like this. This is for the people that enjoy using their cars, which it's kind of a refreshing difference from like a typical car show where everything is perfectly polished. I drove, my brother-in-law's got a yellow one, right? I yeah, yeah, Polished that right. thing. It's like, it's got some miles on it and stuff. It needs a little bit of work, but they're, as soon as I drove it, I'm like, okay, now I understand it. Now I get why people love these things. I think it's because it's, it's like, you feel the car, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Newer cars now, you just don't, you don't get the feel of them when you're driving. Them. Especially for a German car back in like the 90s like this, these yeah. things were so like simple and basic that they almost feel Japanese, but with like, <laughs> I don't know, more solid kind of a build on them. Yeah. Is this an M3 or is this just a regular E36? I don't see, don't they have vents if they're an M3? Uh, on the fender? Not on, the, not on these. No? no? I should know, I polished one of these, but it was a while ago. So, I don't know if this is The seats in this thing, holy crap. Good luck with the blind spots, eh? This thing looks like it's uh, ready for business. I mean, it's, oh, it's rear badges. And yeah, and I guess it is an M3 then. Shows how much I know about BMWs, huh? Check out that diffuser. This is sick. So this is the one that he just drove back from out west? Is it this one? I think it's this one, because this is an Exige and that's an Elise, isn't it? Very cool. You Salika guys have a special place in your heart for these ones, don't you? Because of the drivetrain and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> so the 2ZZ supercharged is pretty good on these things. Yeah. Did they ever actually come with the K-Series or is it just that people swapped them? I think they came with it. Like the newer models or something? Yeah. yeah. Very nice. These things are so small and so... It's like a Lego car. It's like one big chunk of fiberglass. <laughs> you want to get in a fender bender with this thing, man. This is all one piece. Yeah, the clamshells are... Expensive, expensive to replace, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Even before I got the gear, I was looking at, like, rec ones. Yeah. And just pricing out, like, paper shells and stuff, and it was pretty crazy. Have these gone up in value big time too? Just like essentially everything else these days, I assume. Look at the carbon wiper cowl on. Right? I don't know what's OEM and what's modified on this thing. It looks like it's got some aftermarket stuff on it, no? Very cool, man. This would be a ton of fun, but I don't know if I could fit in one. I'd be wearing it like a t shirt. <laughs> Not a regular t shirt either, a size medium. Check this thing out. I followed this thing on the way in. SC430 or 300, I don't know.
I was just saying, if I was gonna repaint the MR2, I would really consider this color. I think this is Imperial Jade from the Supra. Obviously it's an OEM color on this too. This is like the Lexus version of the Supra back in the 90s, but this is very cool. It's on air ride, just saw him pull in and drop it down. Nice looking paint, very cool wheels. These are custom built wheels, I'm assuming. And this guy's gonna slam into it, hopefully not. The wood crane wheel on it. These things are cool, man. Don't sleep on these Soarers and SCs. These things are a lot of value for what you can get them for. Essentially, it's a Lexus Supra. Very cool. I don't know what body kit this is, but it's like super subtle, eh? I was just looking at the front bumper. I'm trying to figure out which one it is. Yeah. <laughs> It's a really nice shape too. Huh? Check out this old Alpha. It's not a whole lot of European cars here today. It's surprising. Normally these cars and coffee events are kind of tailored to the, the Euro guys, but this thing is immaculate. I don't know what model this is. I'm not big on Alpha stuff, but it's like brand new. This thing must have been fully restored or something. This is like flawless. Very cool. Park next to an R8. It's like the <laughs> cool thing about cars and coffee. You get something for everybody, right? An old Quattro here. Some rally inspired action. Again, I don't know much about these. These are what, five cylinder turbos or something? I just remember all the Group B rally stories with these. So it looks like it's seen some stuff, but uh, hey man, it's just character. I think it suits a car like this. Let's see. Double world champion. Pretty cool. <laughs> Sheesh license plate. Interesting. I get it on the sunny side so I can get my ugly shadow all over it, like all so it matches the rest of my footage. Top footage, bro. This is Steven Spielberg action right here. Number one YouTuber. What are these? Gram lights, maybe? Wilwood brakes up front. Varus body kit. Bright seats. Cool. Look at the color on this Beamer, man. Wild. Perfect. Number, number one YouTuber right here. So this thing, we just heard this thing drive around the block and come back. It's supercharged, but it's got like a stock exhaust on it. It's like super quiet, but you can hear the supercharger whistling. It's interesting. It's uh, function only, I guess. You don't want attention. This guy's here. I'm not sure if he's here at the event because all the other cars are parked over there, but we got... So this isn't Inferno? Oh no, because look, it's got the, the different stamp on the bed, right? The TRD Pro stamp. And it's got the red anodized uppers. From oh, that's right. This is brand new. This is a 23 then. Yeah, so this, this is, is uh, Oc Solar Octane? Solar Octane. Yeah. It's cool to see one out in the wild. I don't know about these steps, man. You're hurting your ground clearance big time. What the I can't imagine those aren't going to catch on stuff. But yeah, this Solar Octane color is pretty cool. Check this thing out, eh? Also, Look at the Olin say, shocks on this thing. Say, also, this thing? Holy crap. Really cool. Wrong channel of mine, but... Uh, <laughs> Dude, performance baggers are like the new thing, I guess, right now, eh? Yeah, he just pulled in from the jungle. <laughs> just to drive, just to drive straight from the jungle. Oh, it's diesel, too. You need about a 15-foot step ladder to get up into the tent, though, eh? Oh, wait. Well, you don't want to fall into that one drunk. <laughs> Speaking from experience. Yep. <laughs> Hang on, it's, it's story time with Boosted Salika. Okay, here we go. So this used to be the time club. It used yeah. to be a nightclub, and there was all, like, all sorts of LEDs, and it was crazy. Now it's a library. Huh. And like, if you go on the back side of it, you can see where they've added on like all the glass. Yeah, yeah. So now if you go on the back side of it, it actually hangs over the river. So you like, you're sitting basically on top of the river. Oh, cool. So it's kind of cool. And it's all glass on the back side of it. So it's like- So it pays to read. Yeah. So it actually like, I don't go there because I don't read, <laughs> but I would go there just to sit and have a coffee. Well, if you find the right book, you probably still get some MDMA or something in it, right? Yeah. Oh man, I think it's so clean. Pretty smooth idle for a big power Supra. It's 
funny, his, uh, he brought his seven-week-old baby with him today. And I'm like, dude, you put the baby in the Supra? He says, no, I brought my wife in the Miata. <laughs> This thing is wild, eh? I wonder if it's swapped or something. People love swapping these things, don't they? Yeah. Look at the leather gasket. Oh yeah. I love the little details that people do on some of the older European cars. Very nice touch. <laughs> little exhaust on the back. This is awesome. Again, another one that's like in perfect condition. This is like the Alpha, eh? Like just flawless. Every square inch is just perfect on it. These brakes are huge. It's pretty random. We got yet another boosted Celica. <laughs> so it, it's not a Celica if it doesn't have the TRD gas cap lid. GT4 brakes. Anki RPF ones. Pretty similar setup to Tyler's. He's saying next up he wants to do the E153 trans on this thing just because that's the weak link on these GTS's. The six speed trans has some, some weak gears in it so he wants to put the MR2 transmission in it and beef it up a little. There's nothing like pulling into a car meet or something with a tilting race clutch. Talk about pressure. Look at how wide this Corolla is though, eh? So, it was a pretty good event, I guess. Not a huge turnout, but uh, good quality for sure. Gotta turn the fans on here. Now I think I'm gonna go and get some uh, new gas for this thing I wanna have a little bit of fun with this. We're down to what? Quarter tank, close enough. Oh man, this is the worst case scenario, sitting on a steep hill. Don't stall, don't stall.
Makes cool noises though for sure, that's no question about that. It's crazy how far modern cars have come though. This used to be one of the fastest cars on the streets back when it was first built. Now you can walk into pretty much any dealership, any car maker, and you can get something this fast or faster. But the one thing the new cars don't have though is the character that something like this has. This car is truly one of one. Some of the things are not great about it, like a clutch and the, you know, just the drivability, but to me it adds the character and I find that this car is such an experience to drive and knowing that the average person, I can't just throw the keys to them and have them drive it, they'll stall it 45 times and then probably give up. It's just, this car is built for a very specific individual and it just so happens that that's me. New cars are too easy to drive. They're too good. They're too... I don't know. It's a good thing, but it's just a little bit boring to me, you know? Let's take the long way home. try and make some more of these kinds of videos. I thought it'd be kind of cool to share with you guys uh, sort of the lifestyle, the import car kind of stuff because I was into this stuff long before I owned a Toyota truck. I've been doing this for, I've owned this car for 18 years and uh, it's a big passion of mine of is hanging out with these kinds of uh, modified cars. I think it's uh, pretty interesting stuff. I love watching this kind of content on YouTube so if you guys do as well let me know in the comments below if you want to see more of this stuff if you want to see more of this car but anyways I guess I'll wrap it up here and thank you guys for watching I will catch you on the next video don't worry there's maybe lots more Toyota truck stuff still coming but uh, maybe I'll filter some MR2 stuff in between that hope you guys have a great one and I'll see you on the next one later